States. Rachel is the program director for foster care recruitment for Mission West Virginia, which is a nonprofit, non-governmental agency. And she joins us via telephone. Rachel, good morning. You're on Eastern Pan. It'll talk with Rob and Bill and John. Great to have you with us. Good morning. Thank you so much. Uh, Tell me, uh, first and foremost, the obvious needs in West Virginia for foster parents and how this collaborative will help recruitment. Okay, great. So we have over 6,000 kids in foster care in West Virginia, and um, we always need more foster parents. Um, It's pretty much a consistent need throughout the state in every part. And we're really excited because this is the first um, statewide and collaborative effort that we have had to recruit foster families. What do you need to do to recruit a foster family? How do you find these folks? So I um, I work at Mission West Virginia. I'm a program director here, and I have um, done foster parent recruitment for about 20 years. So um, basically, we want to just get the messaging out, one, that there is a need, um, and two, we want to dispel some myths about being a foster parent. So just a lot of awareness and education. And part of the campaign um, dispelled some common myths about foster parenting. So for instance, a lot of people think that a foster child has to have their own room, and they do not. They can share um, a bedroom with other children of the same gender. Or um, some people think that you have to be married to be a foster parent, and you can be um, single, divorced, married, cohabitating, same-sex couple. Lots of different family compositions um, make great foster families. Bill? Yeah, uh, good morning. Uh, How closely do you work with Child Protective Services? So my agency contracts with the Department of Human Services, and we have done that for over 20 years because um, they are the ones who are placing the children in foster families. So in West Virginia, we're what is considered a privatized system. The Department of Human Services places children with relatives because when a child comes into care, um, it's best if a child can be placed with an appropriate relative. And in West Virginia, over 50% of our children in foster care do live with relatives. Um, for the other children that um, an appropriate relative is not available, they need a foster family. And there are 10 private foster care agencies that certify families and then help the Department of Human Services place those children in homes. Who does the oversight once a child has been placed? We had a very unfortunate uh, situation a few, couple, three, four weeks ago in West Virginia. How do you ensure that does not happen again? Well, that, that's not part of what I do, but in general, when a child is placed in a foster home, um, there's a lot of workers that oversee the placement of that child. So um, the Department of Human Services, there would be a child protective service worker involved in the case. There would be a worker from the foster care agency involved in the case. The children have an attorney appointed for their welfare, which is called a guardian ad litem. So that's, um, that's who oversees kids who are in foster placements. Um, as to who oversees kids um, who are under investigation by the Department of Human Services, by CPS workers, that's kind of not my not my piece of the pie. Mr. Gilstrap. So uh, we, we've got biological relative placements. We've got mm-hmm. um, then foster families. When When all of that is done, I'm going to guess, with so many kids in foster care or needing foster care, there are some when the music stops, there, there's no place for them. Where do they go? Yeah, you're correct. Um, we do not have enough foster families, and we do have kids that can't go with a relative or be with a foster family. So those kids, um, there's a variety of places they go. There are temporary shelters where children can go until a placement, a placement can be found. Um, there are residential facilities, and those are more for children who maybe need some some treatment before they can be placed with a family so they can go to residential and receive some mental health treatment and and help with um, whatever behaviors might be preventing them from being safe to live with a family. Um, What I try to communicate to the community is that even though there might be enough at times there might be a foster family for a child um, if when we don't have enough foster families in every area, sometimes that means a child gets placed outside of their community, then they have to change schools, then they lose people that are familiar to them. Sometimes siblings get split up. Um, it makes visitation difficult with parents or family members if a child has to be placed in a foster family, to, say, two hours away. Um, so even um, even when we have 
a reasonable number of foster families, you want to make sure that you have enough foster families in every area because ideally we want kids to stay in their communities. So when a foster family decides, okay, a potential foster family, they're, they're mm -hmm. making the decision whether or not they want to do this, are they, do they have a choice in which foster child to take, age group and, and such, or do they sort of agree to take whatever is available, whatever is brought to them? That is a great question, and that's actually one of the myths that we dispelled in this campaign. So um, I was a foster parent myself. My son's adopted through foster care. And when you get licensed or certified to be a foster parent, that is part of the process. So you sit down with your agency worker and you say, these are the ages of children that I feel that I could parent. These are some of the behaviors that I feel that I could work with, and these are behaviors that I couldn't. Um, maybe you can only take a certain gender because if you already have girls in your home and they need to share a room, you would only take girls. Um, so there's, and there's a lot of different ways that you can say, these are the kids that would be the best fit for my family. And then um, absolutely a foster family can get a call where a placement is needed and they can say, um, no, we're not available right now, or no, I don't think that child would be a good fit for my family. Rachel, uh, on, on average, how much time does a foster family, foster parents, spend with a foster child? That's a tough question. I don't know the average, but what we tell people is anything from a day to a year or more. Because a lot of times when children are first taken into care, they just don't know. They can't predict the outcome of a case. And especially on day one when a child is removed, you just don't know. So sometimes it could be a day and then a relative is found. Um, sometimes it could be a few months. Um, but if, it, if it's a case where the parents are working an improvement plan through the court, you know, you're looking at a year or more where a foster family has a child in their home while their parents try to remedy the issues that brought the child into care. Bill? Are you finding any positive results from your statewide campaign to recruit foster parents? Absolutely. So on average, Mission West Virginia, um, per our contract with the state and per our recruitment campaign, um, we have been doing recruitment, you know, for about 20 years on our own. And prior to this campaign, we were talking to about 100 families um, a month who inquired about being foster parents. The campaign started in March, and since that time, I would say we have had about 400 new inquiries just as a result of that campaign. So how do you get paid then? How does Mission West Virginia, you're a nonprofit, but how do you get money We're to stay in business? Yeah, you're, but you got to have operating funds. How do you get them? Oh, absolutely. I'm a program director, and operating costs is a big piece of what I do. So we are primarily grant-funded, but it is a huge variety of um, programs that have federal grant funding. Um, my piece of programming, which is things foster care adoption and kinship care related, we are primarily funded through grants, such as from the Department of Human Services. But we also have some private foundation grants. For instance, one of my programs is funded by a grant by the Dave Thomas Foundation for Adoption. In regards to being a foster parent, how many more do we need in West Virginia, Rachel? That is a really tough question because sometimes it's not about the number, but sometimes it's about having families who can take the children that are coming into care. So we could have 5,000 foster families, but if they only take two and under, that's not going to work for us. So what we tell people is there's no magic number, but we need families um, enough families in every part of the state, and we need enough families that can care for our population of children 0 to 18. Um, what we always focus on at Mission West Virginia is that we need families who can take um, older children and teens and sibling groups. Those are always a high need. Do most foster families take more than one child? They do, and honestly, it's it's not common for one child to come in by themselves. Um, usually it's um, two or a larger sibling group. Um, there are foster families that can take one child at a time, um, but usually usually it's, it's two or more. And how do foster families get compensated? Obviously they don't do this for the money, but they do need money to pay for what these kids need. How do they get money? Absolutely. So they get what's called a boarding care check or a stipend, and that is considered a reimbursement for the expenses related to the care of the child in their home. And children also have medical cards so that their health care is paid for. And um, children under the age of five qualify for things like WIC so they can get assistance with formula. 
And as well, foster parents who work full time or in school, um, they have child they have child care reimbursed by the state. And so Rachel, we encourage families that you know you can be a two parent working family and still be a foster family. How do our listeners and viewers get in touch with you if they'd like to find out more about becoming a foster parent? Absolutely. So the campaign website is wefosterwv.org, and I would encourage people to visit there if they can because there's a lot of good and up-to-date information. Um, That's the new campaign. Um, They can also call me at 1-866-CALL-MWV, and that will reach um, both ways, reach Mission West Virginia directly on the website. You can put in a a web-based inquiry, or you can call us at 866-CALL-MWV. Thank you, Rachel. Good stuff. We'd love to have you back again sometime. 